Hey, what's up guys? Sam here. I hope you're doing well today. I'm back with a first look for you of trackpad support in iPad OS 13.4. It is out of this world cool. If you're looking forward to this feature, it does seriously help the channel out. If you drop a like down below, of course, hit subscribe because there is a lot to dive into. This is going to change the way you use your iPad and I think it's for the better. So I've spent some time with this feature. I've really tried it out and I have to tell you, I think trackpad is going to be the move on the iPad. Well, it does also support a mouse so full cursor support is also available for USB or Bluetooth mice. For me, the trackpad gestures are what make this transition worth it. But I also want to be clear here. Apple is not switching the iPad to a desktop-like PC takeover platform. They're simply adding that as an option. And it's very clear here because just as much as I feel incentivized to click with my mouse or my trackpad or type with a real keyboard, there's still just as much of a reason for me to use my fingers to interact with my iPad. It's a very fine line that I haven't seen many companies get right but Apple has killed it here. Just recently, Apple announced a brand new iPad Pro with an external keyboard that also includes a trackpad. It is an astonishing move for a company that was very slow to adapt the iPad to changing times, but that's clear that's not the case anymore. If you've ever used a normal computer, then you're gonna feel right at home using a cursor on iPad OS, but Apple did something special here. They didn't just copy and paste what's been on the Mac forever. They made it a bit different to the point where there's some direction. It feels like this is optimized for iPad OS, not simply just another feature. There's a real sense of direction here with iPad OS's cursor support that I love because it feels like you're almost using your finger on the touchscreen, even though you're using it on a trackpad or a mouse. There's a real sense of where to go and what to click and it can show you that by making things a little bit bigger. There are these really soothing animations all over the operating system now that you only get when you use a mouse or a trackpad. You can see, you can almost get these 3D uh, parallax style effects, which you can turn off if you're not a huge fan of them, but I like it because it adds a sense of depth, something that you don't get when you're not physically touching the screen. That still is here with trackpad support. You can use it to 3D touch on app icons. You can go up to the top left corner of the screen and head over to Notification Center. You can even tap and drag on the home bar at the very bottom to close out of apps or go into multitasking. But when you use a trackpad, there are some unique advantages that you don't get with any other mouse. You can pinch to zoom, or you can swipe up with three fingers and go to the app switcher, or you can just swipe up in general with three fingers to close out of apps. You can use right click by like tapping with two fingers on your trackpad. You can move the cursor down to the bottom to get quick access to the dock. Of course though, there's also some other configurable options and settings. So just go to settings, accessibility, and then there's a brand new section titled pointer control with a new icon in the iOS 13.4 GM. So first under appearance, increased contrast is just going to allow you to see the cursor more easily. Sometimes it is a bit easy to lose it. Uh, and then there's a cool feature that sort of makes it feel probably the most iOS-y that's called automatically hide pointer. By default, it disappears every two seconds. So unlike a computer where that's your only input, this is what I mean when I say they still encourage you to touch the screen physically. You don't only have to use it. But if you want to turn off this feature, you can, or you can actually adjust the number of seconds to, I think, pretty much whatever you want, although two is the default. Below that, there's an option to change the color of your cursor. So white, blue, red, green, yellow, orange, and even adjust the size of the stroke, which is pretty cool. Below that, of course, option to adjust the pointer size. If it's too small for you, it actually is kind of small by default, so I did turn mine up a little bit, just personally. Here's an option for the animations. If you want it to animate and adapt to elements on your screen. I would recommend leaving that on because that's what makes it feel the most special and unique to me. And then trackpad inertia, this is really cool. If you like slide your finger around and then let go, the cursor will keep going. So it's like that motion, you know, it keeps up with you. It's not like a mouse where it just stops dead in its tracks. When you stop moving it, it, uh, it keeps moving it. It's a really nice touch. And then below that, your scrolling speed, of course, vital to adjust how you like to scroll around. This is mainly if you have a mouse because on the trackpad, you essentially control your own speed. Apple's been calling the iPad a computer for years. And I mean, it is, it is technically a computer. It can do your email and use Safari and you know any other fun apps that you find on the app store. But for me, I, I could never do real work on it just because it didn't feel like I could. I mean, there was introductions of mouse support in iOS 13 and iPad OS 13, but it just never felt like the right option. It felt like an option, but it didn't feel native or even fully or properly supported until now. I want to hear your thoughts about this down below. What do you think of trackpad support? It is a killer feature, and I didn't realize how good it was going to be until I sat down and actually tried it. 
it's, uh, I mean, it's incredible. I don't know what else to say. If you want to get your hands on this right now, it's out for developers, but on or after March 24th, it's coming out to the public for everybody. You just have to update to iPadOS 13.4 via iTunes or on your computer or in settings, and then you'll have it. So that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new, drop a like, and of course, hit subscribe for more. I've been Sam, and I'll catch all of you in my next video.